Um, hi everyone. Oh, my name is Olin Kogini, and this is your outbound product manager for ALM and ATF. And um, we have Amanda here. I would like how you introduce yourself. Yes, no problem. Hello, everyone. My name is Amanda Sones, and I'm a technical consultant under Impact, specifically on the technical accelerators at Scale team. Um, so what my team does, we actually provide a service where we help enable customers and specific products of interest. Awesome. So, um, guys, the, the, the whole point of this is to actually give you like um, a workshop. Um, so what we're doing, we're doing a series where we do workshop based on a family release on things that have changed within a uh, product like ATF and some other in, um, products. Well, for this now, we're starting with ATF and we're doing a getting started with ATF, like what you need to know about ATF. And we're going to do a couple of demos. So um, we're going to go right on to it. All right. So um, before we get started, we also want to let you know about the safe about notice. Um, every single thing we talk about, we hope um uh, might change. Like it might change, but we don't want you to make purchase or any buying decision based on what we're going to discuss today. So um, we're going to cover the following. We're going to cover understanding ATF. We're going to also cover the ATF basics and also demonstration, then a couple of um, frequently asked questions that we had from customers like you. So um, for us to get started, so the, the basic thing you know, know about ACF is the fact that it helps you create and run automated tests to confirm that your instance box have to make any change. And this is basically us saying, okay, you can actually do regression testing and also functional testing. It's certain things ATF can help you do. So um, we usually advise our customers that prior to an upgrade, we expect that you run your ATF test. And after the upgrade, you also run the ATF test. So those two test results, you can actually confirm or check um, how far your instance has regressed, if that's the case, or if your modifications are still um, intact and OK. Then um, we also want you to know some of the Things the ATF does not support at the moment right now. We would say ATF is not an end to end solution for limited testing. Also, we also want to say um, there's limited UI testing support within ATF. And also, ATF is not suitable for mobile testing. So you can use it for um, to test your mobile applications. And so there are three basic rules within ATF the first one being the test designer. and we see this test designer persona as someone who is low code or no code, where the team member actually can create and run tests. So this person is actually familiar with the service now um, platform itself. And this is one of the most common um, roles on any service now project. We also expect that particular test designer should be able to do some level of debugging. Um, which might require advanced level of ATF. So we expect that this person, even though they are no code or low code, should be um very knowledgeable in his own service now. And the next one is the fact that um most application developers are assigned this role due to test important to do due to need to test important customization. So you would see folks like um, web service tester, which we're going to talk about later, having the roles of a test designer because it supersedes the test designer. So um, the next one is the test administrator. So this is a pro code where all, anyone assigned with this um, role can actually manage the system, the ATF system properties and actually set appropriate um, um, features or appropriate properties on it. They are required to actually maintain client test runners. So let's say, for example, you're trying to set up an headless server. Um, the test administrator would be the one to actually help you do that. Or let's say you want to switch from an headless server to using um a new, sorry, not new, it's been up a while, a cloud runner feature, the test administrator would be the one to actually help you do all this. Then um, they're also tasked with defining the test result retention policy. So how long do you want to keep the test? Is it 30 days, is it 60 days, or is it a year? So this um, the test administrator are responsible for doing that. The next one is they are also tasked with creating new step configurations. So um, in later videos, we're going to talk about how to create tests and we're going to also touch point on test step configurations. So the test administrators are the ones that have the um, roles to actually create those new test step 
configuration that the case may be. The third persona within ATA or the third row would be the web service tester. Now, this is also another pro code row that actually provides access to web service module tests. Um, so the, the whole point of these guys is that if you are trying to create new scripts or if you're trying to do server time side testing, this is where you have your web service tester. These guys are pro code and they can actually perform the role of a test admin and test designer, but they are mainly tasked with building web service tests for your ATF test. So we're going to move on to the next slide now. So what's the purpose of ATF? Um, the first one being we're trying to improve automation coverage. We're trying to help you automate your tests across all customer customizations. Like if you are, if you have made modifications to your um, service and applications, as long as you have ATF, you should be able to test some of these modifications. The next one is we're trying to increase delivery. Um, we want you to test as much as possible and actually get the results you, you want or the results that actually reflect what you have in your test or what you have in your instance. Um, we are also trying to reduce defects found in prod, so which is why we always advise that customers should do the ATF test in sub a sub prod instance. With this, you can actually reduce the number of customer defects or customizations you might have. So um, these are some of the things you can do with the ATF. This is not an exhaustive list. Uh, the first one being you can create tests, you can schedule tests, you can also use what we call quick start test or quick start suit. So this quick start test are uh, more like a predefined set of templates that we have our BU, our business units um, generate once um, we have new applications. So we have various quick start tests for ITSM, for um, HRS and the like. So you can actually help this, this can actually help you kick start your ATF journey. The next one is parameter, parameterized tests. As the name implies, it means you can actually use um, variables or specify inputs for your test. The next one is ATF administration. So there's a special place where you can actually go to and um, set properties of your ATF test or your ATF um, framework. The next one is also text execution. We have various ways that you can actually execute your test. You can run them on your client, your client device, which is your 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 browser. You can also um, configure an headless browser. Then the next one being you being that you can actually use uh cloud runner which ensures that you can actually run your test on our own service line infrastructure. What is the typical recommended cycle when using ATF? The first one is create an ATF test. The next is for you to run the test, um, upgrade your instance, run the test again just to compare the result and and that's the cycle that goes on till you have a new family release. Um, so I, I think now, um, after now that I've gone through um, the basics of ATF, we are going to do a demo and Amanda will take us through some of the things we've just discussed. Nice. So I'm going to share my screen one second. Okay, so I have a demo instance here, and um, the first thing that I will do is kind of walk you through the ATF testing framework um, application through some of the some basic definitions on the modules and the different components of that. And then we will click into some of these modules and kind of demo the things that were just previously presented. Um, so we have this first section here in order to find the ATF module, you would just need to type um, automated test framework in your filter navigator. This should be already installed in your instance, but of course, if you don't see it for any reason, you would be able to find that in the plugins or the ServiceNow store. Um, but to start with that, this first groups of um, selections are just more related to the tests that you have in your instance. So we have the test module itself. This would contain all of the out-of-box quick start tests, as well as any custom tests that you decide to build. Um, we have the suites. This is like a collection of tests that are all packaged together. So later on, I will kind of click into this and show you the different types of options that we have. Um, quick start suites. This is specifically 
um, service now quick start suites so the difference between suites and quick start suites um this one will be a mixture of service now and things that you've made well this one will just strictly be service now suites um, we have the test results as well as parameterized testing results a couple of mo modules down here for you to kind of review the results that you have once those tests are executed um, and the schedule so that you're able to not only schedule your tests but also monitor the the types of schedules that you currently have manual page inspector as well. I believe we'll cover this a little bit more deeper in one of the other slides, but this is just a way for you to kind of check the components um, and, and ensure that those are testable within ATF. Um, the next collection is more based on that actual execution itself, so the run. And we've already talked about it a little bit, but there are a couple of different ways that you can actually run your test, one of those being the client test runner. And this allows you to see specifically the UI-based actions actually execute. Um, so you're kind of able to manage those with some of the modules that you see here. And then last, we have the administration side of that. So you'll be able to set up the properties, kind of configure how you want ATF to run and execute. Um, we have step configurations and step environments. So this is more related to the actual ac actions that are being executed within the test. Um, test templates and things of that sort. You can kind of set that up if you do have those administrative roles um, to, to execute in your instance. So the first thing that I will click on is the properties. Um, so this is the first thing I recommend to set up before you even start creating or executing a test. Um, so I will click here to kind of get in that scope in a second. Um, but the first thing that you all need to do, especially um, on any of your subproduction instances is enable that test execution to run. Um, so like it was mentioned earlier, <clears throat> we don't want you to run any test on production. Um, so although ATF tests, the data does get automatically rolled out or rolled back, my apologies, um, if there's any instance where, let's say, for example, your computer crashes and it's not able to get to that rollback step, you might make real changes in your production instance, and maybe you might not be able to trace the type of changes that were made. So that's why we recommend to kind of just eliminate that risk altogether and um, just disable that in production instance and enable it in any of your subproduction instances to run. So there's a lot of properties in this section. I definitely recommend for the um, administrative test testers to kind of go through these and configure that, but I'll highlight some of the key ones that I like to configure when I'm um, um, configuring this property section. So we'll do the screenshots. Um, as far as the options that we have, we have enabled for all steps, failed steps, or completely disable them. Um, so I recommend to kind of have that enabled for failed steps just because um, it can kind of take, it can increase the time that it takes for your test to run. Um, but for, but some of the use cases for some of these other options are if you want to enable for all steps, this is good for the kind of initial um, stage when you're first building out your ATF test and you want to kind of make sure that everything's okay. But once you have that built out, um, I would say it's pretty safe to kind of enable that for failed steps and get those screenshot notifications um, just when something is wrong. Another thing that I do like to enable is this one right here, this glide screenshot feature. Um, so this is really important for um, ATF tests on workspaces, portals, or just other um, interfaces that are outside of the classic view. Um, so the first time that I started to build ATF test, I started doing portal side testing specifically on employee center. Um, and I was always confused, like, why are my screenshots blank? But definitely it's because of this property here. Uh, so once you do that, then you'll start to see everything. Um, and again, there's a couple of other properties, but those three are the main um, important ones for me. So if you're doing some of these other types of testing, email, um, UI, and things of that sort, I definitely recommend to take a look at these. And there are explanations for every single property so that you kind of know what happens and, and what these are exactly for. Yeah, uh, I suppose that. Yes. So then the next one that I will go into are the tests. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this consists of all of the out-of-box tests as well as the ones that you have. Um, so the way that you can typically tell if there are an out-of-box test is that they usually are named by application. So a lot of the ones that you see here um, are the out-of-box tests. Um, and I will click into one of these just so you can kind of see an example. Um, but the purpose of these is to kind of use this as either a template, maybe you can make a copy of it, build upon and kind of customize it to fit your specific business need. Or if you're not really um, that much customized in your instance, you can kind of run this, see um, how well that it runs. 
But one thing to keep in mind, all of these have a read-only protection policy. Um, so in order to actually use these, you need to um, copy that test. And then from there on, you're able to kind of reuse it and kind of reconfigure those steps to best fit your needs. Um, another thing to mention, all of these out-of-box quick start tests, it comes with something called demo data. Um, and this is just actually an example, is what I like to see it as. Is a, it's an example of how to kind of configure and use these steps. Um, so one thing to keep in mind, if there's ever a step that you're interested in using, and maybe you're not configuring it correctly, and you're wondering, like, why is my test failing? I recommend to try to find an out-of-box test and see how it's properly configured, because maybe you're not setting it up properly. And, and there's a good um, incorrect configuration on all of these out-of-box quick start tests. Um, so next, I will go into the suites, very similar to the test, except for this kind of packages everything together. Um, so again, how I recognize that these are service nows is that they're all named by their um, application. Um, so in my personal opinion, what I recommend to do is um, look through the suites, find an application that you're trying to test, and then see what all of the available options are. Um, this is the easiest way to kind of find a test that you're interested in using. Um, in addition to that, you're also able to make your own suites as well by clicking this new button and kind of package any of your own personal tests. Um, we kind of recommend either packing, packaging those by application similar to the ones that you see here or similar functionality. So then the next one I will go into is the schedules tab. So I don't have anything scheduled here, but like I mentioned, you're able to schedule those tests. And if you do create that schedule, you'll see a different types of options like daily, weekly, or whatever you kind of prefer. Um, so this is super helpful, especially when it comes to upgrades, because you can have those scheduled before and after your upgrade. Um, and also schedule it outside of business hours, for example, if you have a lot of tests that you're trying to um, run. So like, for example, you can upgrade and also schedule that at the same time so that when you wake up, you'll see your instance on a new um, release and those results already populated so you can get right to work. Yeah. Yes. And then that is mainly... I think we also want to talk about test templates. Test templates, yes. Yeah, that one. So these temps templates, these are pretty much a way for you to put an unconfigured list of steps inside of your instance. And it's very helpful if you recognize that you're kind of following a similar pattern. Um, so rather than rewriting all of these steps over and over again, you can actually create templates. Um, like, for example, let's say you always know that you navigate to a specific path before you start um, executing some type of test. You can create that as a template, and then that would kind of prevent you from needing to um, manually add each one of those every single time. Yeah, um, so and they, they come in very handy when you want to um, create, start creating your own test. Like, instead of using, sometimes, I, I think I hear customers say, oh, they use quick start test. But with this also, it is a way for you to also start your ATF test. Pick mm -hmm. up a couple of templates and put them in your test um, suit. Yes, I've gotten some questions like that as well. Some people are like, are we able to create our own quick start test? Um, And this would be the best way to essentially do that is to kind of put that as a template. Yeah, yeah. And you can always add them into any kind of test you already have. Yep. Definitely. But that was some of the main core components. Were there anything else you wanted to look at in this module? No, I, I think that's all for now. Um, we're going to go more in depth for the later um, walkthrough videos. Those ones we're going to do some live test creation, shutting of place and lights. But with this, this is good. We're good with this. Yes, and, um, there is one more thing, actually, I almost forgot to show. Um, yeah. but Something else that I like to show is more related to these quick start tests. So this is actually also dependent on the types of applications that you currently have installed. Um, but there are also a lot of quick start tests. So if you go to the ServiceNow store, you'll see the many different options. Um, so this is what I always recommend to do before you kind of decide that you want to create a test from scratch. I recommend going to the ServiceNow store and looking at all of the available quick start tests. Some of these, for example, CMDB, everyone has a CMDB, so this would be really helpful to um, in upload and install before you start creating those. Another one, service catalog, a lot of people have that as well. So that's another thing that you can just grab um, and then use as well. So definitely make sure to look at the, the plugin store as well for any types of options. Yeah, this is valuable tip here. Very important. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, guys, thank you very much for watching this. And if you're going to come up with more series to actually help you 
make sure your ETF adoption of your ETF usage is as easy and free flow as possible. So thank you guys. Thank you.